Hi, Kevin here. Today I'd like to show you one way, my way, to peel and cube a butternut squash. And here's the squash which came from my garden. It's getting you adjusted here. And it weighs 4.4 pounds. So it's pretty good sized. I had a lucky harvest this year. So now I like this method of peeling and cubing the squash because there is virtually no waste at all. So what you do is first wash the squash and then take a sharp knife, cut off the stem end. I always keep a waste bowl handy. And then cut off just a little piece from the blossom end. And then you want to take a Y peeler. This is a vegetable peeler that is in the shape of a Y. It's much more efficient than one of these little narrow common vegetable peelers. And what you do is start peeling from just above this bulbous section of the squash. You want to pull the peeler towards the stem end. See, it peels very easily when you have one of these Y peelers. Of course, I've also tried peeling squash with a knife, and while it can be done, it's very tricky to do. And this way, when you use the vegetable peeler, you won't end up accidentally cutting off one of your fingers. So that's a real bonus point. And then you can see there are a lot of these green lines. You can leave them if you want. I tend to just lightly peel a second time to remove those green striations or whatever you call them. They are perfectly fine to eat, so you really don't have to worry about them. I just want this squash to look pretty. Pick up all these bits. And by the way, on that theme of no waste, all of this is going into my compost bin. Alright, then you want to peel the bulb end. And so, just pull the peeler towards the blossom end of the squash. And this actually goes very quickly. It's much faster than using a knife to do the whole thing. And if bits of peeling fly all over your kitchen, well, that's just part of the process. Okay, and then if you have any bits of peel around this uh, round edge here, very easy to, to remove with the Y peeler. Okay, we're looking good. Just going to clean up the scraps, which again, will go into the compost bin to create fabulous soil. Okay, then take your knife and just above this bulbous end, Make a crosswise cut. There. Stand that up. And then of course the seeds are at this end. And you want to cut this crosswise in half. And then grab a spoon. I'm going to use just a common soup spoon. If you have a serrated grapefruit spoon. That would work really well here to remove the seeds. 
you just go around and scoop out the ski the seeds and these stringy fibers. You don't have to get all of the stringy fibers out. They're perfectly fine to eat. Here's the other half. Yeah, I had a really, really good harvest of butternut squash this year. And I posted a video of that harvest the other day, so you might want to watch if you haven't seen it already. And I will be making lots and lots of butternut squash recipes for you this fall. And I think all of the recipes start with one peeled and cubed butternut squash. So this is really just a reference video. Trying to get out some of the stringy bits. And believe me, removing the seeds and strings from a butternut squash is infinitely easier than removing the seeds and strings from a pumpkin. Yeah, cleaning a pumpkin is not one of my favorite things. It's a messy job. Okay, then for this, here, let me clean up my cutting board a little bit. Now, for this bulbous half, you can cut crosswise or lengthwise, it really doesn't matter. Um, I think I'm going to go crosswise. And if you have a heavy, sharp knife, this is very easy to do. And then we're going to cut this part into, oh, I'm going to do a one inch dice, a rough one inch dice. There's a little bit of seed I didn't get out of there. Hang on, I'm going to grab my baking sheet. Okay, here's my baking sheet, which I am going to spray lightly with vegetable spray because butternut squash tends to stick if there's no grease on the bottom. All right, I'm going to throw all of these onto the baking sheet. And by the way, you can freeze butternut squash without cooking it first. And you would follow the same technique. Just put the squash on the baking sheet, freeze it, and then bag it. Uncooked. So here's what I have so far. And then, as for this cylindrical part, you want to cut this into slabs, and of course it'll, it will sit upright. So let's see, I'm going to do about one inch slab straight down. One more. And then you can stack two of these at a time and just cut slabs into strips and then make crosswise cuts to create your cubes and onto the baking sheet they go sorry you can't see my baking sheet I don't have a wide angle camera dollar camcorder that I'm working with. And I like this camera because it doesn't have any bells or whistles. So here's a four and a half pound butternut squash all cubed. 
in almost no time at all and for very, very little effort. And then, if you're going to roast this, as opposed to freezing it, and you can roast and then freeze, what you would do is sprinkle this with olive oil, toss the squash so they all glisten with the oil, and then roast at 400 degrees. Let me talk with you. Wrong way. Roast at 400 degrees for 40 minutes or so. You want the squash to be fork tender. And I'm going to be using this squash for my favorite butternut squash soup. It's called caramelized butternut squash soup and it has bacon in it and cream. It's really rich. It's really wonderful. And I'm going to be filming that recipe next. But I, again, I just wanted to give you a reference video to show you how to peel and cube the squash. Hey, that's all. Thanks for watching. And if you like these little tips, please like and subscribe and tap the little bell icon to receive notifications. Also, post a comment below because I do read all of the comments you send in and I do love hearing from you. Okay, I'll see you very soon. Stay tuned for that butternut squash soup recipe, okay? Bye-bye.